Welcome back guys, we're back at it today. So last week we had Cars on Coffee and this video was supposed to drop last week but then we had Cars on Coffee so I figured I'd share some, you know, more car stuff with you guys, change it up a little bit. And um, I'm sure everybody was kind of looking forward to seeing what's gonna happen on the Yellow Omar 2. So today what we have planned is to get that timing belt done. It's gonna be difficult to film. It's gonna be a challenge to work with the engine in the car, but we're gonna get it done. So stay tuned and let's jump right into this video. All right, we're gonna start by taking out the intercooler pipes. So we're getting to this um, timing belt work. So we just gotta pull a whole bunch of stuff. I'm gonna try to get the intercooler out first. Then we're gonna get underneath, get the belts off. So the AC belt, alternator belt. Then we'll pull the engine mount and just kind of prep the space so we have some space to work with. Cause right now, there's not much space to work with, so just follow along. I'm gonna get this intercooler fan out right now, just to give myself some space. All right guys, so I pulled the intercooler pipes off. For the intercooler, I'm getting it out. I think maybe you can work with the intercooler um, in the car, but just to give myself some space, I went ahead and um, I'm gonna take this out. So to get it out, you gotta pull the throttle cable. Um, throttle cable adjustment or regulator, whatever you call this thing, out of the way. So there are three um, bolts, basically one right here, one in the back and one on the top. So you gotta pull those out and then you just flip it out of the way right here. And then for the intercooler, <clears throat> there you take the fan out, there are three bolts that holds the fan. Uh, two on the top and four on the bottom. Two this way and two looking up, right? So you pull those out and then the intercooler is free. And then it's a trick to kind of get it out because you got to wiggle this thing, seriously wiggle this thing out. Um, so you just gonna, you're, I'm gonna show you guys we're gonna bend it and we're gonna pull it out here, but it's kind of tricky, but it can be done. So we're gonna get this top bracket out. It's held on by one 12 millimeter bolt. And this is for the intercooler, so there you go. Two 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, it's the top mount. And with that said, the intercooler is now free. You're just gonna, this is, it gets tricky here, guys. You just gotta manipulate this thing and move it around. And if I didn't take it out before, I would tell you, I felt like this thing does ne never wants to come out, but it will come out. Just gotta play with it. So the trick is you twist this right side of the intercooler this way, and then it comes right out like that. And I'm telling you, that was not easy. I'm sweating like crazy, but um, got the intercooler out. So here is the lower bracket. So this basically was on like that. So I pulled those screws and then that's how you get this big old, very inefficient intercooler out. All right. Now we're gonna go get the belt off. And basically there's a 14 millimeter nut on the edge of the pulley here, just loosen that up. Gives you access to this one where you can adjust the tension. And then once you have the tension adjusted, just basically turn it anti-clockwise. You can just lift the belt off. So it releases the tension off the belt. And then there you go, you got your belt off. All right, um, next um, we're gonna try to get this bracket off. So there's a 12 millimeter bolt right in here in the front. And just for camera purposes, there it is. We have it loose already. There's another 14 millimeter right under here. Sorry, 12 millimeter right under here to get this bracket off. So we're gonna pull that and remove this. And then we're gonna work our way back, taking the engine mount out, taking the covers off so we can have access to the timing area. And then we gotta get the alternator belt off. So the tensioner is down here. Hopefully you guys can see that right in this section. So we'll pull that, we'll get the belt off and then we'll just pull all the covers off here. It's Pretty tricky to film because it's such tight spaces, but hopefully you guys follow along and you would have seen me refresh this 
Trius GT outside of the car so you kind of get an idea hopefully you can follow along any questions feel free to ask me along but I'm just trying to try to give you snippets of what needs to be torn out in order to get access to that timing cover all right so I got the idler bracket off for the AC so pull that 12 millimeter under the bottom and then we're gonna pull this long 12 millimeter on the top here and basically here's the one from the bottom this is the one and it, it's one of the mounting bolts for the AC as well you just pull that out and then this bracket comes up so this is what it looks like all right so we're going to put this off to the side and as you can see we're starting to get a lot more room to work with because the whole idea here is having enough room to work with because this is a pretty tight engine bay so we can get to this timing cover uh, moving on next we're going to get to engine mount so there's a 17 millimeter bolt on the side you pull that one there are two 14 millimeter bolts on the bottom and then i'm supporting the engine on a jack so now here we go we got this main engine mount out and again as you can see we're starting to get more and more space as we get into this engine and the last piece of the puzzle is to get this um engine mount bracket off and there are three 14 millimeter bolts on the side there these you probably have to, I'm gonna to try to get them from the top. I think the, the lower one, I have to get it from the bottom, but essentially if you're doing this, just remember there are three 14 millimeter here. You're gonna pull that off and then basically that's gonna give you access to this entire cover. So you can remove this and see what's happening inside the timing cover. Alrighty, moving along, moving along, because this is a process, let me tell you. Um, so I got the J-hook out, and of course it's not coming out because it's so tight, so I'm going to have to jack the engine. But I went ahead and took these two 10 millimeter bolts on the top of the timing cover. And as you can see, there's oil, so there's definitely oil leaking somewhere in here. So we got to, I mean, that's part of the reason why we're pulling this apart, so we got to go figure this out. And now I gotta get this mount out and I'm pretty sure I can get it out without having to take the lower cover off. So I'm gonna try to jack the engine up and see if I can get this thing to move now that the engine mount is out. There you go. Okay. So I'm hoping this is gonna give me some clearance here. Let's see how high I can get this engine to go there you go so we just kind of jack the engine up and here it is with a lot of oil but as i look inside the cover here and if we can get the camera down see it's a lot of oil oil inside there a lot of oil on the alternator the tensioner has oil it's a definite definite way i got a leak going on here as you can see lots of oil kind of hard to say where it's coming from looks like honestly looks like it's the cam but we never know all right so as i just mentioned we um got the every dollar covers off so now i'm going to get the belt off so there are two 12 millimeter bolts for the tensioner right below this and it's a good thing about doing this out of the car you kind of know where everything is so we're going to pull this we're going to free up the tension on the belt get the belt off start getting the cam gears off kind of see what's going on Ooh. All right, 10 trainers out. Those are the two 12 millimeter bolts that were sitting under there. Very hard to see. So now, um, I did have the engine set at top dead center. So we lined up the mark on the bottom, lined up the two marks on the top. You've seen, if you watch this channel, you've heard me say and do this countless times. So now the tension on the belt is loose, so we can just basically pull it off. And we're just gonna slip this out. Pull it, slide it down on the pulley on the bottom. And there's some guides. I'm hoping I don't have to take these guides out, but yep, there you go. So we don't have to take the guides out. 
All right, belt is out. Genuine Toyota. And I want to say, I think this belt was replaced. I can definitely tell that the water pump was replaced. Car has 93,000 miles, so when it was replaced, that's what we don't know. Maybe 60,000 miles, but it still looks pretty decent. But we're going to replace it. So now, guys, this is what we have working with. We're going to get to the cam gears right here. And I already pulled the cam bolts. So we should be able to just get this finished off pretty quickly. And we can see what's going on with the cam uh, seals. So just remember to make get your engine set, the timing set. Because if you don't, then you gotta figure it out after the fact, which could be a problem. And this is one of those jobs you do not want to do twice. Unless you have a lot of time on your hands and nothing better to do with your time. The cam gear in the back is going to be the one that's difficult to get to with the seal because it's very tight back here. This one, you got a lot of room to replace it. Um, so once you get to this, I don't want to say the hard part is over, but some of it is over. Alright, so we got this one. And this one. And you can tell timing was done. See, somebody marked it. That doesn't come from the factory like that. All right, so there you go. There we have it. Now you get a better view of what looks like. I mean, it shouldn't be wet here. So I got oil coming from this one. And this one is really bumped up. So I don't know. So I'm not right. don't know. I mean, as you can see, tons of oil there, so we're gonna have to invest in some brake cleaner and clean all of this up. Here's that pulley. Sounds smooth enough. We're gonna replace it anyways. So the pulley's awesome. It, it seems fine. But we'll go ahead and replace it. So this is where we are. Um, I'm not gonna bore you guys with this part of the process because you have seen me do timing already on the channel. So if you wanna do that, fine. We'll probably throw some you know, snips here and there of the process, but um, probably the next time, or, or next clip you'll see here is us with this hopefully installed and no problem. So stay tuned. All right, quick update. I got the oil pump housing out, so we're gonna change that seal. A lot of lightning outside, it's raining. But uh, we got the oil pump housing outside, so we're gonna change that O-ring and the seal. So let me show you what I have. So basically, <clears throat> this is what we got right here. So we're gonna replace this seal here, and then we're gonna put the O-ring into the head sorry the block and um we reinstall this so this will be all sealed up and we're going to move on to the cam seal and then the cam seals cam seals sorry. all right finally got to the cam seal so i got the oil pump area prepped but i went ahead and pulled the cam seal out so we have the old one there and then we got this new one now we're going to go pop right in i right, got this space nice and clean so now we're ready to put these seals in Put the oil pump in, put the cam crank seal in, and um, then once we're done with that, we can get the lower idler pulley on, and then just keep our working our way up to the cam shafts, get those seals replaced, and then put the belt on, and hopefully it goes smooth. Then the hassle is to put everything back together that we ripped apart just to get to get this far in the project. All right, another update: cam seals are ready. OEM. The air is clean, ready to install. All in all, it wasn't too bad. So I'm moving along here, guys, almost there. So this has been quite a mission. I put the timing on three times, it didn't work. So I decided to pop the valve cover off to make sure that my timing marks were set. Every time I would put the time in, I'd go back and down here, it would be off it wouldn't be on zero it'd be a forward now learning lesson here you got to do this timing with 
the lower timing cover on because there's no inner markings on that um, crank gear for you to set it without the cover on. So this cover here needs to be on so you can basically use those markings to get that on zero. This is on the 3S GTE Gen 2. And then I took the valve cover off because I was just I just wanted to make sure I'm getting this thing right. Initially, one of the pins on the cam cover where the gear goes on had fallen out and I'm pretty sure I'd put it back in the same place, but this is how you check it to the valve cover off just to make sure this is in line. And this one is in line right here. So I just wanted to check that just to make sure we're good. So as of right now, I got <clears throat> The crank on zero and I have the cams lined up so should be good all right so let's put this valve cover back on and see if we can fire it up and if it will start all right guys so after a long exhausting day we finally got the timing done uh, put everything back on um, I did try to start the car with the, the intercooler out pipes disconnected it would not start but what I learned is you know, you gotta have everything connected for it to start. Unlike a Gen 4, Gen 5 that will start, I'm assuming the airflow sensor because it's not feeding through directly into the intake, I'm not getting the measurements, I'm not sure. It would not start until I reconnected everything. So I temporarily reconnected everything. The car started up fine. Then I pulled everything apart because now I took the heat shield off. We're gonna paint and polish and you know get this thing looking much better. So the good news is, we got the timing done, the seal's done. Um, so far, no leaks, so fingers crossed, it's all good. We solved that problem. And um, now I just gotta work on getting this engine looking, you know, like we typically see on this channel, painted and clean and all of that good jazz. But um, again, the video, it was very difficult to film just because of the whole position of the engine here. But hopefully you guys learned something. And you know, if you watch this video because you're trying to get the information if you have any questions, give me a shout out. Let me know, I can walk you through the process. The timing is a little bit different um, to do, very similar to Gen 4, Gen 5, but a little bit different. So anyways, we're gonna wrap this video here. Um, so we did get this done and I started painting some of these pieces, but you will see all of that come together in the next video. So with that said guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.